This Thrive Loud episode is brought to you by Allscope, a holistic media communications company with a long history of delivering great work and driving exceptional results. From concept and idea to time and place, Allscope's thinking has no limits and no boundaries. Their experienced team builds fully integrated solutions that perform. Go to allscope.com to connect with them so they can listen and best inform and advise you on how to build your business and your brand. Allscope. Listen. Think. Create. Do. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you an important announcement. Thrive Loud is officially the best podcast ever. And Lou Diamond is still bald. That is all. It's time to take an inside look at those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome everyone to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. Today on Thrive Loud, we bring you executive chairman of Share This, the sharing intelligence company powering human connections. He's coming from us from California, Thrive Loud listeners, Kurt Abramson. Kurt, how are you today? Good morning, Lou. How are you? I'm great. I, I love these bicoastal things, the morning, the afternoon. For all the listeners, they're going to be listening at night, whenever it might be. But it's uh, it's very fun to connect with you. We just recently met uh, all the way back in the East Coast and uh, more like in the upper New York State region near the Finger Lakes. Uh, you've got a great story, a great company, and a, a very fun journey in uh, one of the more busier parts of the world and one of the spaces that everyone is involved with in some form or fashion in social media. So if it's okay with you, Kurt, if you can give us a little bit of a quick version of your history and get us to where we are today, and then we'll go back and forth and uh, jump in appropriately. That sound cool? Sure, absolutely. How far back you want me to go? <laughs> Not from the womb. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I think... Um, I'll start in uh, I'll start uh, in 1994, which is really where my digital part of my career began. Um, I uh, founded a company with a, a guy I went to high school with um, named Gene DeRose called Jupiter Communications. Uh, it was the first research company to follow consumer interactivity, uh, which at that time was really like CompuServe and AOL and Prodigy and companies that are mostly not around. Of course, AOL is part of Oath at this point. And um, we did Jupiter for about 10 years. I did that um, uh, to the early 2000s, and we became a very successful company. We went public. Um, you know, back then, two guys in their 30s could take a company public without a lot of experience. Those days are, are generally gone. Um, but after Jupiter sort of moved on, I went out to California, and I got a job at Google. Uh, where I worked for six plus years, um, initially to launch AdSense, which is, you know, the little ads on publisher sites, and then doing a few other jobs. And um, then I decided for whatever reason to become CEO of a venture-backed startup. Uh, I, did, <laughs> I did one called socialmedia.com for about 18 months, and then I jumped over to share this where I've been for six plus years. So help us understand uh, a little bit about Share This and what, what they do and or what you guys do and um, its place within the social sphere, if you would. Absolutely. So Share This is that little widget, that little two-armed widget you see on many, many publisher sites. Uh, the original conception of the company was as readers were reading their favorite stories online on their favorite news sites. They needed a way to share the content into social media channels. So the share this widget lets you share to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, whatever social network you wanted to. Uh, it was a great idea. Uh, like many great ideas, it was a simple idea. Um, and the company soon was powering the sharing on hundreds of thousands of websites uh, around the globe. Um, as with most venture-backed companies, eventually you need a revenue model. Um, <laughs> yep. at some point someone has to pay the bills besides those who have uh, financed your company. Uh, and we, um, 
uh, started doing uh, a meet more of a media focused model, taking the data that we collect and use it for targeting advertising through media. And then over the last uh, few years, we've moved to more of just a data focused uh, business model. Um, th- the cool thing about Share This is we sit on 3 million websites around the world. Um, so it's still very popular. Uh, some big sites use it like USA Today and CNN Finance, but lots and lots of small and mid-sized publishers use our tools to help their uh, users share content. So, so, so here, here's what I love about learning, learning about, about people, people who've been, been in the space. space. We recognize that data has always been very important. And you have sat from the, the early 90s to today in companies and organizations that really are looking at how that data connects with us. And I think it's rather funny that the, the tagline is powering human connections because the mediums that we use today are, are constantly changing. And, and from, I mean, I, I can't keep up with what my kids are doing when they're in Snapchat or whatever medium they're in. So you've been sitting in a space watching it move and, and, and taking it to the, to the next level at each of these companies. What have you enjoyed more? The seeing the growth and the success and the building of the companies or the ever-changing technology that you're swimming in within the, the community that you're involved with? Well, they're both amazing. Um, you know, from a, uh, let me take the technology part of it first. So when I started doing this, you know, 20 years ago, um, the only way to get information was through a dial-up modem to very small, um, you know, with very small content available. And uh, really, when Jupiter launched its first online advertising service, it was people literally counting ads on pages themselves and multiplying them out with estimates of how many pages and how many ads per page. Um, oh and so when you think about how that has changed in 20 years, um, you know, how technology has changed everything. You know, we were up, you know, as you noted at the beginning, we were up at Cornell last month. Uh, these kids are like, like when I was at Cornell, I had an electric typewriter and I was a little bit ahead of the curve. Um, you know, now these guys have everything and they're on social media and they know, they know what they're doing, man. So it's, it's, uh, the technology is fascinating. And of course, all the public policy stuff that come with it is also really fascinating. Let, let, can I dive into that for, yeah. for a second now? Because at the time of recording this, we, we've passed about a month ago. Obviously, a lot of public issues were happening with how data was being utilized and viewed in Facebook, uh, all of the, the the issues that Mark Zuckerberg had to face in Congress, and lots of changes and security policies across the platform. Give me a little bit of your take and your heartbeat on where this stuff is going and where you think it will go in, in the future. Because one of I had a conversation with the head of an advertising company, and he says, this is all just smoke and mirrors. At the end of the day, we always knew that they were, Facebook was watching our behavior and showing us the the messages that was there. We always knew this, but not everybody else did. Um, take it from your seat where you're very much involved in companies that are focused on the data and give me your two cents on this whole take. Right. So um, let's not forget that advertising has always been about targeting. Right. When you read Elle magazine or Vanity Fair magazine or Sports Illustrated, the ads that appear in those magazines are because they think they know who you are. And when you watch TV, it's the same thing. Now, the Internet has allowed for a targeting and personalization that is, you know, is derived from the technologies. And it's very accurate um, and it's very, very influential. Um, you know, I have a slightly different take on it, which is, um, you know, yes, I agree with the agency exec you talked to. Uh, we all have known that Facebook is using data to target advertising. Um, everyone knows, you know, when you go look at your, you know, your ski boots or your Hawaii vacation and whatever it may be, and you see ads for those sites days and weeks after you actually visited those sites, that is digital ad targeting. Um so I, I um, you know, Reed Hoffman is famously quoted as privacy is for old people. Um, <laughs> I think most people, especially younger people who use the Internet, do understand that they are seeing free content because they're being targeted with advertising. Um, so I, 
you know, I think from a macro point of view, it doesn't disturb me as much. Now, things like Cambridge Analytica and taking that data and using it for purposes purposes that are not really direct advertising, but are sort of of a slightly different nature. I do get people's concerns about it. Um, but I, I um, you know, I think, you know, in some ways it's, it's people are protesting about things that they intuitively understand have been happening. And again, in general, not always, but in general, the harm is that you see targeted advertising based on your interests. And I think you need to be understand. It's not like, um, you know, someone's driving a car over your, your, your right. head or something like that. It's like, <laughs> it's advertising. People are trying to sell stuff. Yep. No, it's very, it's very true. I, I'm jumping around a bit here because I, I realized what a unique role you've played in all these different companies. And I wanted to get your take on this. Um, you've started companies in the mid to the mid to early nineties, and you've been leading a company today. And I know that there's been, I, I deal a lot with companies and helping them to understand their connecting culture, helping their, their teams to work together better, their salespeople to get their messages to connect better. There's a totally different makeup between the people that you have starting in young technology companies from ago to today. Uh, what have you seen? What's been good and what's been getting better, if you would? So I think, um, so if you look 20 years ago and you look today, uh, the one thing that is consistent um, is, you know, the smarts and intelligence and the uh, ability of the people that you can hire into your companies, right? I don't think people are smarter now than they were 20 years ago uh, overall. <laughs> they have more technologies and more ways to be productive than they had 20 years ago. But I think, you know, the people that I, that worked for me uh, at Jupiter, many of whom are still my good friends, are an amazing set of people. Um, the people who work with me at Share This are an amazing set of people. And so I think the, you know, the one constant is just the quality of people um, overall. There is... Um, you know, in California with people in their 20s, there is a little bit of a, um, you know, expectation that the world is going to come to them more than you have to make, <laughs> make your way in the world. Um, you know, I think that people are also, I think, you know, it's, it's changing a little bit now, but there is definitely you go work for a company for two years and you make a million dollars and you leave and you go work at another company for 18 months and make $2 million. Um, most companies fail uh, and most right. people don't make a million dollars. And having an expectation that your company is going to be Twitter or Facebook or Google um, sets you up for a lot of disappointment in your life. Um, you know, so I think that expectation and sort of that um, assumption that you're going to be, um, you know, that, that all you have to do is show up and you're going to make a lot of money. That's something that's a little bit different now than it was 20 years ago. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And, and it's a it's a great lesson, too. I guess you get to see a lot of, of that in, in the seats you've been in. Uh, Kurt, here, here's a good question. Do you still have that same thrive and, and energy um, that you you take that you took from way back when? I know it's changed and life has changed, and you now have you know almost adult kids as you would say, as you as you've written on your Twitter uh, handle here. Uh, tell us about uh, the the passion that you have for the work that you do today. If it's any different, better, or going in a different direction. So I have. Um the same passions uh, in life that I've always had and approach things in the same way. I have to say that as, you know, I had my 57th birthday a couple of days ago and um, I am, you know, thinking about enjoying some things in life more than just uh, more than just work at the same level I have for the last 20 years. I don't know what those things are. Um, <laughs> and I certainly plan on keep on, you know, I don't, I'm not retiring I don't, I, you know, I need to work. I want to work. Um, but you know, as you get a little older, you get a little bit more, um, uh, perspective. You know, there was a great, um, a great, great quote from Barbara Bush who just passed away and I'm, I'm going to mangle it, but essentially it was her commencement address to one of the, um, all women universities. Uh, you know, you'll never, you, you know, you'll never, um, regret one last meeting you'll never regret one last deal signed you'll never regret you know working on the weekends 
but you always will regret time that you don't spend with your friends and family if you miss that. Uh, so I think that's a great one, right? Like, yeah. you know, I mean, we were up at Cornell. I mean, the only thing you want to do with some of these kids is say, it's going to be okay, right? You know, <laughs> you, don't, you don't have, you know, you have a life, you don't have a career. Uh, it's going to be okay. But of course, when you're 22, you want to get, you want to get off to a good start. Yeah, I like that. And by the way, it, it, it led really well. I was going to ask you if there's any good piece of advice as a leader that you have. And I think it, that's a, it's a great message to, to the young world. They're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, for the, for the Thrive Lab listeners out there, both, uh, both Kurt and I are involved with the communications department at Cornell. Uh, as many of the people who listen to this program, they've heard many of the interns come on the show. We got to see them in action and some of the ideas and I mean, the, the, unbelievable professionalism at such a young age that everybody is having at the university level is, 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 I think they're just coming to work more prepared. I agree with you. They're not smarter than they were 20 years ago. They just have so many more things at their fingertips that, uh, that you and I didn't have growing up, let alone electric typewriters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, they, I think they show up at these events because they are the, the kids that show up at the event, but man, they are so articulate and they are so thoughtful and, um, you know, they're just, uh, the, the, you know, the reason why I take 12 hours to get there each way is to spend some time with these kids and just sort of get us, it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it, it provides energy. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, for sure. So one of the questions that I ask all of the guests on Thrive Loud, Kurt, is when you have trouble thriving, who or what do you turn to to get back on the thriving track? Uh, that's a great question. So, um, you know, from a uh, from a people point of view, uh, my family, my friends, uh, my girlfriend um, are all people I look to um, to help me, you know, uh, get my mojo back at times if it feels like it is um, – if, if it is, you know, dripping, you know, for me, um, I love to read. Um, I love to go to, I love to see movies. I love to watch sports. So sometimes the best way for me to get my, uh, you know, to thrive is to just sort of be by myself, <laughs> uh, <laughs> absorbing things and just sort of, um, you know, having a chance to, uh, you know, to be alone, to be honest. But, you know, I have a great network of, of business friends, personal friends, um, very close with my family. So, you know, all, all of that combined keeps me thriving. That's great. And, uh, and by the way, a lot of the people who've been on the show, that has been uh, more and more we hear people meditate. Uh, they, they go run, they go walk in the woods, they, they experience nature, they do something to themselves. And I find it interesting that when you think of the word thriving and being around the energy of others, it is interesting that we need to recharge and look to within ourselves to, to get that. And I think it's, I think it's powerful and a lot of uh, great leaders all fall into that. So I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah. I'm still sure. trying to, f- still trying to figure out what I do every day. I've tried everything, <laughs> meditating, this and that, doing podcasts. Uh, so here's the fun question. Uh, Reese, you've been CEO for share this for a while and now you're executive chairman. Uh, talk about some of the exciting changes at your company and uh, what's going on over there. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, about 16 months ago, I hired a, a guy named Dana Hayes, who um, was working at Axiom, which is one, another huge public data company. And he came in as president to share this um, to help really build our data business and transition it. Uh, I brought in someone at that level. You know, I was the CEO and he was the president, but we essentially were peers. Uh, our, you know, he's got more more experience than I do, and it just. Um, it seemed like a, a good time to make that transition happen. We've been talking about it for six or eight months, and um, it just felt like, uh, le- you know, let's do it now. Um, I'm staying as executive chairman, so that generally means, you know, a role that has some involvement in the organization. And I'm still managing some of the team, um, still working on some important strategic initiatives for the company. But Dana was super excited to do the day-to-day. And I was super excited to let him do the day to day. So, uh, you know, sometimes those things are awkward and are forced and don't work out. Uh, in this case, uh, it feels like a win win, uh, uh, although it's only been three days. <laughs> <laughs> the third day. I feel like it's awesome stuff. And, and we'll, we'll air this within about a month. So it'll, it'll be a month in three days, which is always okay, good. Okay, so. perfect. 
Excellent. Um, so Kurt, dude, let's get that out of the way right now. Like, give me all the plugs and, and things where we could find you, uh, learn more about share this, where all the social places so that the listeners can learn more about the organization and yourself. Sure. Well, you can go to share this.com of course, um, to learn about share this on our website. If you're a publisher, you can simply and easily download the tools that we offer. Uh, they are free. Um, they allow publishers to have a great way of just um, putting all the social buttons they uh, they want on their site. Um, so that's, uh, you know, I, I get people all the time saying it must be complicated or it must cost to use your tools. And the answer is no, they're free. So that that is for the company. Uh, for me, you can reach me at Twitter at, at Kurt Abra. Uh, I try to stay active on Twitter as, as much as possible. Um, you know, our business right now is really about taking the data that we see across the globe, across all of people's interests and activities, what we call sharing intelligence and making that available to marketers and data companies to use uh, in their program. So if you have any listeners who are find that interesting, it's just Kurt at ShareThis.com. And that's how I can be reached. Awesome. Got emails. Thank God we didn't give cell phones or personal numbers or mailing addresses. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It'd be so hard to track down. Gotcha. <laughs> so so I'm gonna, I'm, I've got the standard question I'm going to go with, and then I have an extra one, which I'll throw on at the end here. So, uh, Kurt, you knew this was coming. Your all-time favorite movie? It's The Godfather. I mean, I'm a movie buff. So, like, as I said – Pick one. I have to pick one movie, but I think that's probably The Godfather and The Godfather Part Two. Um, probably the best six hours of movies uh, from my point of view. So, so I asked. Um, I just love the performances and lo- love the love the whole thing. Tell me uh, if there's is there one particular. Whenever you think of the movie, is there one particular scene or moment that connects the most with you that you always think of when you think of. Uh- I was going to say trilogy, but I really focus on the first two movies. I'm with you. The two, the ones that won the, the Oscars are the ones that I go with. I, um, I, um, because I live in California and the Northern California, I love the, I mean, they're, they're cut over the course of the movie, but the whole thing set in uh, Lake Tahoe for the wedding. Um, um, that, that's sort of like, you know, when, and everyone's coming to see, um, uh, Al Pacino now as Michael Corleone now as the boss. I think I just, I just love that whole thing because it obviously reflects the original scenes with Marlon Brando back in his mm-hmm. you know study and the way they sort of contrast the two environments. I think is uh, uh, is just awesome. You know, um, they don't make them like uh, that it's anymore. True. And they're and they're epics and the and if you think about the every actor and actress involved in all of those movies, I mean, if you looked at what it's almost it's really unbelievable when you think about that too. I, I don't think I don't think that gets enough play on on you know how incredible the careers even of the children of some of the people that <laughs> that were in those yeah, movies. Yeah. Uh it's just it's just one of those epic icons. And it it, it is the most touted famous movie here listed on Thrive Loud. So over a hundred oh, okay. hundred okay. some odd episodes you're right you're right on the sweet spot. <laughs> I, I guess the last thing I wanted to lead lead with here was Someone who's been successful in leading in in the world that you live in over there, from Palo Alto, San Francisco, the the whole Silicon Valley, through through the whole data age, from the beginning to where we are today, is there one learning that you've had over these years, or one message uh, that you'd want to communicate to the to the entrepreneurial or to the business world from your experiences? Because that's a pretty fortunate crowd to have been at, from founding Jupiter, working at Google. So we're going to share this and be involved with this. Um, not everybody has the chance to have that kind of uh, a ride. Any bit of advice to uh, our Thrive Lab, commu- Thrive Lab community? Don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, try, well to be, try to be try to be humble. Try to enjoy yourself. Um, you know, there's a difference between being you know, driving and being aggressive and just sort of being a jerk. Um, so just, just don't take yourself too seriously. Find time to laugh and have some fun. Oh man, that was awesome. Kurt Abramson, thank you so much for coming on Thrive Loud today. Could, couldn't have ended on a better note. Well, well played. Uh, thank you, Lou. Really appreciate it. And to all the Thrive Loud listeners out there, keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. 
Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. And follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Thrive Loud. Or find us on the web at thriveloud.com. Lou Diamond, funding broke college kids since 2017.